It was a year in the making. It lived up to it. Felt like a heavyweight title fight. It was Iowa and LSU, and Iowa getting the better of LSU this time around. Caitlin Clark did not disappoint. Angel Reese lived up to the billing as well. But uh, Iowa, too much. Caitlin Clark, certainly in the third quarter, as she goes for 41 and 12. And trying to guard her, Haley Van Lith, the LSU guard, was asked what it's like to guard Caitlin Clark. What a tough cover Caitlin is. Uh, I mean, obviously you were fighting all night, but uh, just the challenge that, that she presents. Yeah, uh, Caitlin's very skilled. She's a great player. Um, she hit some tough shots. Um, and there's not a whole lot you can do about some of the threes she hit. Um, and I think, you know, her role, or the team around her that plays a role, they did a good job of executing their role. So, uh, you know, ultimately they play better than us, and that's what it was. The key is Caitlin Clark is going to get her points. Great players get their points. Even though you know they're going to shoot, they can still score. It's her teammates. That's really the key. If Iowa wins a national title, it will be because of Caitlin Clark, but it will be about her teammates. They have to fill in the void, whatever that is. Caitlin contributed 71% of the offense last night, whether scoring or assist. You got to have players who make big shots. And Kim Mulkey, the LSU head coach, talked about that. She's just a generational player, and um, she just makes everybody around her better. That's what the great ones do. I think they had a kid that scored 21 and 18. She had 12 assists. Caitlin Clark's not going to beat you by herself. It's what she does to make those other teammates better that helps her score points and them score points to beat you. Um, what did I say to her? I said, I sure am glad you leaving. <laughs> I said, girl, you something else. Never seen anything like it. That was in the handshake line at the end of the game and uh, exchanging pleasantries because all eyes were on Kim Mulkey, Angel Reese, and Caitlin Clark. And uh, everybody was civil with it, complimentary to one another. And Caitlin Clark has another game coming up against Connecticut. UConn against USC. Uh, you can't help but root for uh, UConn, Paige Beckers, everything she's been through. And she reintroduced herself, I think, to college basketball, to uh, America last night. Because she's so good, so talented, so skilled. She was the player of the year as a freshman and then had a couple of knee surgeries, but to come back and play the way she's playing at both ends of the floor. And I told you about Juju Watkins. I've been saying that for six weeks now. She's real. She's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And she's coming back. She's only a freshman. They're going to they're gonna sprinkle in some more talent on that roster. They got a good recruiting class. They just they didn't have enough weapons to counteract what UConn was uh, putting in front of them, uh, but they they played well this year. And uh, you know, Juju Watkins set the all-time scoring record for a freshman in Division One history. But 28 for Paige Beckers, and it felt like that was the Final Four. Uh, LSU Iowa felt like that was the title game, but that was just the Final Four. In case you're wondering. Uh, the women's Final Four, NC State, is getting 11.5 against South Carolina. Connecticut is getting 2.5 against Iowa. That's according to uh, DraftKings. And South Carolina is the favorite to win the national title, followed by Iowa. Then it's UConn and NC State. So we could be looking at yet another rematch if Iowa gets past UConn facing South Carolina this time for the title. NC State getting 9 versus Purdue in the men's Final Four. Alabama getting 12 against Connecticut. So they are predicting yet another UConn victory by double digits. All right, Seton, what's poll question today? Well, why don't we go with a uh, better remaining uh, Final Four? Mm, okay. Men's or women's? Saucy. Right. The men have two ones, a four, and an 11. Right. The women have two ones and two threes. But names on every one of those teams, interesting players on every one of those teams. I think the storylines are probably better with the women's Final Four because I think people are looking at Caitlin Clark going, you did all of this, but the great ones win a title. Because right now you could look at her career in college, similar to Pete Maravich, they scored a lot of points. Pete didn't win any titles, didn't come close to winning a title. 
Caitlin has played for a title and may play for another title. But we do, we do this in the NFL all the time. We did this to Lamar Jackson. We do it to Josh Allen. You're going, hey, you got to win a title here. That's the bottom line. Now, is that fair to Caitlin Clark? Probably not. But if you're looking at anointing somebody the greatest, it'd be like if uh, Patrick Mahomes didn't have any titles. We go, man, he's awesome, but you got to win a title. Uh, Joel Embiid, you got to win a title. Remember the Joker? Oh, you can't keep giving him MVP if he doesn't win a title. That's what this is about. Jason Tatum, hey, you got to win a title. That's what we want. We're a bottom line sports society and we want championships. Uh, are the odds stacked against Caitlin Clark? Yes, they are. But it feels like people are waiting to see if she's going to win a title. If South Carolina is going to go undefeated, could Gino Oriema somehow pull off another surprise and win a national title? The other national titles weren't surprises. This would be. Yes, Eden. I just like, too, that you had Iowa play LSU, which is obviously a great rematch. But now you have Iowa-UConn where Caitlin Clark's natural rival should have been Paige Beckers. Yeah. They're from the same class. They, you know, one was a higher recruit than the other. They, you know, th their careers should have sort of mirrored, mirrored each other uh, this whole time if it wasn't for injury. Well, and you wonder, and this is what happens with great coaches. Uh, you know, people ask uh, Roy Williams and Mike Krzyzewski, hey, you didn't recruit Steph Curry? And they're like, no, we had other players that we had. And Gino, did you recruit Caitlin Clark? No, we had Paige Beckers. That's how she ended up at Iowa, because I think it was Iowa State, Iowa, Notre Dame, maybe one other school interested in Caitlin Clark. But, you know, it's, she is a generational talent. She's changed the game, much like Steph Curry has. Nobody played that way. Now you're going to get... I feel bad for you dads out there who have daughters that all of a sudden they're going to be jacking from the logo. Yeah. And you're going to go, no! <laughs> no! Wait! Come on! Caitlin Clark does it, Dad! No! You're not jacking it from, you know, three-point land. But the number of moms or dads and their daughters at, at the game, prior to the game, Paulie was there. You got to see them just watching her shoot threes all by herself on the floor. Thousands of parents and their kids were there with their Caitlin Clark gear on. And you look at somebody who's seven or eight or nine or 10 and what this is going to do for them in wanting to play. The, it was a great night for women's college basketball. Great night for college basketball. It was a great night for sports last night because you want great players to be great. Juju Watkins, I forget. I think it might have been Dame Lillard who said she's Carmelo Anthony. Like, <laughs> That's just awesome. Get her the ball. Buckets. Paige Beckers. Unbelievably athletic. Uh, then you have Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, putting, you know, grabbing 20 rebounds, uh, rolled her ankle in the first half. Like, it was back and forth. It was fun. It was athletic. It's, it's up tempo. You know, they're scoring in the 90s. It's awesome to watch. And I hope that they continue to build upon that. I just hope the WNBA knows how to build upon that because that's really the key. But Juju Watkins, we could be, you know, on this day and three years from now saying she's the all-time leading scorer in women's college basketball. She's that talented. And I know it sounds crazy to even think that. She scores in a different way than Caitlin Clark does. Caitlin is flamboyant. She's fabulous. Her passing, to me, rivals her, her shooting. And that's saying a whole lot. Having court awareness and trying... It's, you can't teach court awareness. It's a feeling that you have. But watching the women last night, they were a whole lot of fun.